guys, this makeover was so incredibly fun. It took a lot of patience and even more spray paint, but I think it came out so well. So in today's video, I'm gonna kind of walk you through exactly what I did, um, starting with actually purchasing this off of Facebook Marketplace. It originally retails for $600, and I was able to get it for 50. So I took it home, deconstructed the entire thing, and then used our pressure washer to be able to take off all of the gunk, all of the dirt, and everything else that was stuck on this playhouse that had been sitting out in someone's backyard for some time. I used a magic eraser to get off any permanent marker or marker that was put on by the kids that previously owned this house, and everything actually came off really well. There was a couple of spots on the green which I was actually going to paint black, so I wasn't super worried about those, but since a good portion of the house was white, I definitely wanted to get those clean. These panels right here are the front and back part of the house, the main areas, and they were so disgusting. I cannot tell you the number of frogs, dead frogs that I scraped off, wasps nests, dirt, gunk, like spider webs. I mean, it was really, really disgusting. So I definitely think I got a good bargain on it for $50, but at the same time, it took a lot of time to get that clean. Something about you gives me hope. Something about you, yeah. trying to do this project super early in the morning or really late at night, so please ignore the fact that I'm in my pajamas, but wait until you see this sink. This was definitely the worst part of it, and the pressure washer actually got most of it off. I did have to go in and kind of scrub a little bit afterwards with a hard bristle brush, but it did actually come pretty clean, which you will see here in a second. Before we started painting, it did rain, so just because we had washed everything, we brought everything into the garage and kind of let our daughter play with all the random parts, and she was already having a blast with it. So I was so excited to get to the next day where I could finally spray paint. The most common question I've gotten so far is all about the spray paint. So I use the Rust-Oleum plastic bonding spray paint. It was less than $4 per can at Walmart. You can definitely find these on Amazon. I was not able to find them at Lowe's, which I was super surprised about. I used primer, I used satin, I used matte, just kind of dependent on where I was putting it, but definitely needing a plastic bonding spray paint. I remember as I was painting this little mat that goes in front of the door and how quickly it worked, I was totally convinced that this project was going to be so quick and oh, how I was so wrong. It was really easy to paint, but the thing I learned very quickly is that if you're going to use the drop cloths and they're not the thicker ones, they're just the really loose little drop cloths, you are definitely going to need to make sure that you leave everything down for 24 hours, which was definitely not something I did in the beginning. So I had to repaint a lot of the first things that I did. So definitely make sure you're use, either using a plastic tarp or you're painting in some sort of way, but these plastic drop cloths were definitely not easy to work with. Next up was the little pink door, and I absolutely love the pop of pink on this house, especially because I use black and white for most of it. This particular part of the house definitely took a few extra coats, and I think it's because I went from the dark red to the really light sweet pea pink. So I think I ended up doing three coats on both sides, and even though I think that was plenty, 
this again in the beginning I definitely did not let it sit for 24 hours and I ended up having to redo parts of it I cannot tell you enough even if it seems dry make sure you leave it for a full 24 hours in the perfect temperature which is about like 70 75 degrees outside and you will thank me later on but I ended up absolutely loving this pink and I love the satin finish also make the little cabinet doors on the inside with that same pink coat that way all the doors were pink and then all of the fixtures the knobs the sink the sink fixture itself those were all going to be this copper color and I was actually surprised how easy it was to paint or spray paint with this metallic color There were a lot of sticky features on the sink and I didn't have any goo gone. So I just took some baking soda and some vinegar and basically just scrubbed away to see if I could get anything off. The top of it did come off pretty well. I ended up having to get kind of like a bristle brush to be able to get rid of the rest of it. And although I didn't get it off 100%, I was able to flatten it enough so that when I spray painted, it didn't actually affect it at all. smaller pieces to dry since they didn't really work on the drop mat. I actually put them on the caps of the spray paint bottles and then held them there overnight and that really let them dry well. I was so excited to do the bay window. I had been thinking about it all week and for the bay window I had planned on doing the bottom half with that really matte black and the top of it was going to be all copper just to kind of imitate a copper roof and so I used blue masking tape or blue painters tape to kind of block off the top as well as an extra drop cloth and that way I could get the perfect line with the black matte spray paint. Going from tan to white and white being the lightest possible shade you could probably do was definitely difficult. I ended up needing four coats on every side and there were several pieces that were white. So I did do a primer on the white, but for anything that was black, I went straight in with the matte and didn't worry about a primer since the black ones had a built-in primer, and it ended up working out fine. So if you're going to do white, I suggest doing a primer first, but if you're going to be doing a darker color, I say go ahead with one that has a primer built in. I then flipped around the bay window and taped the other side, that way I could do the inside black. And I also used that same tape to block off the roof in the opposite direction, but I used a brand new one just in case you know anything was still a little bit wet. I didn't want to flip it over and have anything affected, especially because this took so much time.
big disclaimer and tip when you're doing something like this and you really need it to be precise any areas that you want to do touch-ups on spray paint and a paintbrush do not work I ended up having to go back and do this one a couple of times with these same steps and it was totally worth all the fuss but anytime I tried to fix something with a quick little dab with a paintbrush or my finger it was ended up being a huge mess and it ended up making it a lot harder to fix Another little tip if you notice there's any sand or water or anything gross that you can hear moving around inside these pieces, you can simply just drill a hole in the bottom. I didn't get anything on video. My husband did have to drill a few holes in some of the larger pieces and I did have to shake out some sand from the sink, but if you simply drill a hole and then just kind of rock it back and forth, it will all come out. I went back and forth so many times on the various ways I could have done the sink. I wanted the burners and the sink itself to be copper, but I wanted the rest of it to be white. I thought about spray painting the entire thing white and then going back in with the copper. I thought about taping it in the opposite way in which I'm doing it now and actually taping the sink and the burners, but this ended up working. So I taped around the entire part that I wanted to be white, spray painted with the copper, let it sit 24 hours, and then when I was all done, I flipped it over, did the bottom side white, and then flipped it back on top, and then I will show you in a later clip how I actually isolated the copper part so that I did not affect those with the rest of the white spray paint. doorbell I took the entire thing apart the original one that came with the house didn't work so I had to order a second piece which I'll talk about later but I spray painted that copper in black to match the bay window I literally danced the entire time I was doing the last coat on the last piece because it had been over a week of constant spray painting and it took me until the last couple of days to realize that I should have totally been wearing a face mask the entire time. But nonetheless, I did get to those last pieces and then I had the sink to spray paint and I was done and I was so incredibly excited to officially say I was done with the spray paint. The summer night has just begun Let's have some fun. So when I first bought this, I did realize there were quite a few pieces, mostly smaller details missing from the one that I bought, and so I was actually able to go on the Step 2 website and order the phone, the skylight, and another doorbell. There were a few things I was not able to order, like the tabletop and the mailbox area, but I did also get a little wreath off of Amazon, which I will link below, as well as a little hello sign that I also got off of Amazon. In the morning, baby, don't leave. Don't need to know we're out here wild and free They say we're crazy, it's too much And yeah, we're crazy deep in love the sink area. I actually took a pizza box from that night's dinner and using a coffee mug, which is the exact same width of the burner plates, I was able to cut out exact pieces for the burners. And then it took a while, but I went back and forth from the sink back to the pizza box to be able to cut something out that matched the sink. 
I then use painter's tape to tape these down directly on top of the sink and the burner. And I don't have a video, I did forget to film this, but I basically just took the white spray paint and sprayed all over the top of it um, and I was able to avoid the copper areas with the pizza box. to the inside was actually to make mini chalkboards. Um, I was going to leave one blank for drawing and then one I was going to make kind of a little mock menu with a little southern charm and add some fun Charleston themed foods. So I measured these out on a piece of wood that we had in the garage and then my husband was able to cut out the exact dimensions for us to be able to put inside the playhouse. <laughs> this chalkboard paper down below. It was so incredibly easy to use. I am definitely someone that is not patient when it comes to wrapping gifts, but that's basically what it was like. And yet it was really easy to use. It was easy to push out the bubbles and I was able to flatten everything out and it only took about 10 minutes. The day we were finally able to put everything together was awesome. I was so incredibly excited. I could not sleep the night before and my husband and I basically grabbed everything in the yard and then started to assemble the entire thing together. Big tip is that you need to have a lot of patience. It's easy to rip the whole thing apart, but as you're putting it back together and jamming pieces in and sliding pieces on, it's very easy to disturb some of the paint that you've been working on. And so in some things we had to do a couple different times or we had to do a little bit slower. There's going to be a lot of areas that need touch up, so just make sure you have some extra spade paint lying around. there were some pieces we were not able to get since this was a used playhouse and one of them being the tabletop. The bottom of the table which you see right here we kind of put in where the fence originally went and totally worked to be able to support the mailbox. Both the tabletop and the fence I guess as well as the mailbox were items you were not able to purchase on the step 2 website. They did not have them as replacement parts so we just took the table bottom and then put the mailbox on which I also got on Amazon and just drilled those into the side. My daughter is absolutely obsessed with her house, mainly ringing the doorbell 5,000 times and opening and closing the door, but I know it's something that she's going to grow into and the fact that we can say it was completely made by us and completely custom for her is definitely something that makes it really special. Already, please like this video and subscribe to my channel. I post motherhood and pregnancy related videos every single Tuesday. I'm definitely going to be looking into getting a cozy coop and doing a makeover on that as well. So definitely check that out in the near future and I will see you in my next video. Bye!